In 1874, most of what we now call Montana and a good part of South Dakota were occupied by Indians. It was their land and their last stand, and they fought successfully to keep that land. This is the legendary story of an Indian woman of that historic time. It is drawn in part from the memories of two Montana women whom the author knew in his boyhood. the Sioux language? My mother was a Sioux. And your father was a turtle. <laughs> oh, Piconi! Why did you run? I killed two men. They murdered my husband. I have no other family. What are you going to do with her, grandfather? Keep her? <laughs> What will you call her? Piconi woman. I am called Waxfar woman. Was anyone talking to you? Come inside and wait for my wife. Come. Come. You're a Pikuni woman whose mother was a suit. She's mine, Red Hoop. I caught her. Be still, Grandfather. Was your mother a suit? Yes. Then, of course, you are welcome among us. What do they call you? Walks far, woman. Your Sioux mother must have given you that name. The Pikuni have no imagination. And the Sioux have... There'll be plenty of work for you to do here. Sioux women are not afraid of hard work. Neither is a Bakuni. Can she stay with me, Red Hoop? I caught her. Can she stay in my teepee? 
She'll stay with us. One wife is enough in this teepee. Your leg is broken, you can't hunt. We have enough mouths to feed here. One wife is enough. You can sleep outside the teepee to keep the dogs away. That same peepee -pee crawler. He crawled into the girl's peepee -pee, and he crawled in under the rope. Well, he thought he was crawling in under the girl's rope, but he was crawling in under the mother's rope. <laughs> and so when the mother felt his head going up her thigh, she jumped on him, grabbed him with a blanket, and dragged him outside of the teepee. And he said, Oh, I thought my horse was in here. I thought my horse was in here. <laughs> Why don't you braid your hair? I've always worn it loose. Sue women always braid their hair. The women in this band have always lived the old and honorable way. Are you working here, daughter? Or only Gus? When you've finished, you can take the blankets off the horses and wash them. They stink of urine and sweat. Plenty my store. You bring buffalo robes after hunt. Trade. Hmm? Yeah. Strong medicine thing. Thank you. 
grateful to you. Not the best of horses. In fact, almost ancient. But it would please me if you accepted him as a gift. For what? You saved my life. Please accept it. Then yes. What do you call him? Badger. Good man. Or poor horse. But I think Red Hoop has something finer for you. Red Hoop! Hey! It will make me feel proud to see you wear this. Sister. <laughs> Many scalps will be hunting again soon, you know. Sometimes he even forgets to limp. <laughs> Have you noticed? Yes. <laughs> He's a clever trader and very generous with the things he gets. You'll get your share. I'll see to that. What is that she's wearing? My daughter? What do you mean? There, between her legs. What is that? Are you joking? No. Don't Bikuni girls wear such a belt? I have never seen one before. And how do they remain virgins? <laughs> virgins? I even know women who tie their daughter's legs together at night. <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. <laughs> Keeps her safe. <laughs> Stop laughing. Stop laughing. I'm serious. Take his place. Let's hurry. This place is fine, Grandfather. Is he your grandfather or your great-grandfather? My great-great-grandfather. Almost 90 winters. The Sioux are a hardy people. A hardy people. With thousands of virgins among them. <laughs> <laughs> You're a silly woman, Walter. Enemies! Enemies! Good. Very good. Much better than sugar. Have you ever tasted the white man's sugar? Once. Did you like it? Yes, but this is better. In the Blackfoot camp, they told me you were part white. Yes. And part Sioux. No. Who told you that? My mother was a Cinnabwe. You speak the white man's language? Of course. I've always found it harsh and ugly. That's because it is harsh and ugly. What language do you pray in? I don't pray. I will pray for you then. In Blackfoot or in Sioux? In Sioux. Well, 
Will you come back again soon? I don't think so, but perhaps your people will come to me. After the hunt? When there are robes to trade. cattle are those I saw outside? Singers. I help him with them when he's away. Did the white man give them to him? Singer? No, no. He earns everything he gets. I heard the white man was giving enough cattle to start a herd. Yes. For any of us will come in, give our names, and be counted. Not for me. My father may have been a slave, but my mother was Sue. What is a slave? A slave's a black man, owned by a white man. Owned? Owned. And what is a black man? You mean you never? Well, well. Well, well. Hello, Waxfire. Hello, singer. I see you found me. Are those your mules outside? Yes. Look like good mules. I brought more to trade than robes and mules. Oh, what'd you plan to buy? Fort Peck? Oh, too bad that some poor ignorant Indian punched holes in them. Makes them less valuable. Pipe, have you got some of that coffee left? You know, we'll have to have some friends in tonight. Welcome our guests. Maybe some dancing as well. Would you like some dancing? Or are you too tired? I'm not tired at all. Well, good. Have you still got that hunting knife? Yes. Here. That's a fine bone handle. Mm, it's better than bone. It's ivory. It comes from an elephant. Um, an animal uh, twice as high as a horse. He has no hair and no hooves. And uh, it, it looks as if he has a tail on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such animal. Well, some people wouldn't believe a buffalo if I described it to them. Don't talk about buffalo. I haven't tasted buffalo meat in months. Yes, he'd like to hunt for buffalo. But if we leave the store alone here, the Pawnee will steal everything in it and all the cattle besides. Let them. I hate beef. You better get used to it. Ten years from now, there won't be any buffalo. Why do you say that? Because it's true. The white man's railroad has already cut the herd in two. And now he plans to build another iron trail that'll divide even those two herds. We'll stop the new iron trail. The way we stopped the old one? We know better now. Maybe so, but uh, we're also too late. The soldier chief, Custer, the one that you call long hair, He's told his people that there's yellow iron in the Black Hills. The Sioux will stop them. Without the help of the army. How? Ah, but I forget. Left Hand Bull sent you for guns. Ah. For hunting. Mm. And only for hunting, huh? Or do you plan to use them to fight as well? If it comes to that. It will come to that. And when it does, you'll see the end of all the old ways. Believe me. In time, you won't even remember what it was like to be wild and free on the prairies. Do you know what it'll be like then? Only the white man's way. The white man's way is different from ours, Pipe. But there's much to be said for it. If you like beef. <laughs> <laughs> Foxfar is going to show us a pecuni dance. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm already at the head of the line. Thank you. Wait. Oh, yeah. Dance. 
cartridges. All you need. Same size the Army still uses. And I can give you a bullet mold and a reloading tool for each four sharps you take. If I were you, I'd prefer the sharps. Hmm. Well, look at the guns, think it over. Well, I see if uh, the women have found anything they like. We'll each take a red blanket and enough of the calico and some of the red wool to make two dresses. All right. I can let you have a thimble and a black paper of needles at no charge. And we'll take these beads. And a twist of tobacco for many scalps. Oh, have you seen this? It's the finest that I've ever taken in trade. Feel this. It's softened without damage to the fur. Feel oh, that. It needs finishing, though. Yes, I know. In fact, I've been looking for a good woman who knows how to finish a robe. Have you seen my husband's yellow robe? Oh, yes, that's beautiful. Walkspar finished it. Well, well. I don't suppose... You're probably much too tired from all that dancing. What is it? No, I couldn't ask you. On the other hand... Yes? Um, I have everything that you might need here in the cabin in the store, and uh, the light is good. Yes, the light is good. But you're probably too tired. She's not tired at all. Then could you, possibly? <laughs> yes. I'll finish the rope for you, if that is what you want. Yes, that is what I want. Many scalps. We'll trade again in the morning, singer. Good night. Well, now, um, take what you want. Uh, the needles are up there. The small beads, the tin dangles, maybe? Should I put this over there? Yes, good. Let me cut that for my birthday. Did you know that? <laughs> Is it? Yes. Do you believe in dreams? Yes, of course. Well, I dreamed that on my birthday, I was dancing under a blanket with a beautiful woman. Yes. And she kissed me. Did she? White man's bed? That's what it is. <gasps> so high, off the ground. Not too high. <gasps> A 
What is it? Uh, the cabin turned over. <laughs> no. You fell out of bed. Here. No. No good white man's bed. <laughs> All right. Here. <laughs> now. Is that better? <laughs> Walks far. I wish two things. I wish that you could stay here with me forever. And I wish I were going back with you. But neither is possible, not just now. In a day or so, I go north of the medicine mine, to Canada. Come with me, walks far, as my woman. I just asked you to marry me. I know. Will you? I would be afraid. You? Afraid of what? I don't know you, singer. Well, I, I thought you knew me well enough. I find you very different from anyone I've met before. You sound, you sometimes seem, more white than Indian. I do not understand the white man's ways. I don't understand this house. It can't be moved when the buffalo move. And how you can own any of the animals that the Great Spirit has given us. I don't understand why you plant things to grow when everywhere around there is plenty to pick and eat. But do you understand me, Walks Far? That's all that matters. I'm not sure. Let me wait. Then you come back. Well, that won't be for a long time. How long? Perhaps a year. A year? That's... Yes. That's a long, long time. Before you walk far, perhaps in the spring. For now, we should keep our minds on getting ready for the winter. White cap! White cap! Uh, white cap! You don't understand! Big like snow! I warned you the last time. I am becoming a laughing stock. This time it is final. I am throwing you out. Is she really divorcing him? She will divorce him again the next moon and the moon after. Big Lake likes all the women. That's the last we'll see of them for today. <laughs> Medicine Cloud, Sacred Horses Ghost. Feather Earrings and I have been away from our people for a long time. And we're back now to tell you we killed many enemies and took many horses. Good. Just last night, the one you call Horses Ghost killed two enemies and took their horses. He did this without help. He did this 
all by himself. Horse's ghost. I think you're talking through the pipe. He speaks the truth. Last night, he found a large camp of crows and slit noses from beyond the mountains. They were dancing together with only two guards for their horses. He killed them both with his knife. And slit their throats in the Sioux manner. So they'd know who stole the horses. How many horses? Five in all. And where are they? I have them tethered by the river. Come. I'll show you. There. There they are, all five. But one of them will never be good for anything. There. I call him Crazy One. Ah, uh -huh. Crazy One. He's there riding him. That's how he got his name. Crazy from his nose to his tail. He looks like a fine horse to me. He's about five years old, I guess. Too old to train as a buffalo runner. I should have left him behind. No one can ride that horse. There's no such thing as a horse that can't be ridden. And who are you? She came to us after you left. She lives with Minnie Scalp's family. And no doubt she's broken countless horses in her long lifetime. <laughs> The others are good animals, though. That mare there? Let me have him for four days, and I'll ride him. I'll wager my horse against yours. And if I ride him, I keep him. It would be stealing from you. Where is your horse? There. He's nothing but an ugly old mule. But already broken and perhaps not too difficult for you to ride. Are you a Sioux? She seems too rude to be a Sioux woman. She's Pikuni. Pikuni woman. If you can ride that horse for as long as it takes two dogs to sniff each other at just one end. Give me four days. You just lost your horse, Pikuni. I have a name. It's Walks Far. And I am called Horse's Ghost. And I'll soon own that ancient beast of yours. We have a wager, then. We have a wager. Good. <laughs> Father of Amantish, I am here because I need medicine. What kind of medicine? Strong medicine to break a wild horse. Which horse is that? The one belonging to Horse's Ghost. I've seen that horse. I have no medicine to help you. But you have medicine for everything. Not for a horse as crazy as that one. When I was a young man, I went on a raiding party far south to the country the white men call Espayo, Spanish. They're very slow and patient in breaking their horses. But maybe this one can't be broken. Maybe they're right. You'll have to speak to him gently and say his name often. He doesn't even know his name. He's too crazy for that. You'll have to starve him for both forage and water. And make sure you're the only one that leads him to the creek to drink. Allow him to drink only a little at a time. And when you feed him, do the same. Only a little. Patiently. Slowly. And say his name over and over again. What's she doing now? Getting him used to the smell of her. See how she nuzzles up close to him? I won't even bother to watch. Unless I run out of things to laugh at. She's taking off her dress. She's crazier than I thought. No, no. She's putting it to his nose. And now his neck and his shoulder for the smell. So he will always know the smell of her. Crazy, Bikuni woman.
He wouldn't accept a saddlebag. He barely accepted the blanket on his back. He will accept me. Oh! Walk far! You're riding that old animal for the last time. No, I'm riding your horse for the first time. Crowding close to him. What's that crazy woman doing now? Keep a tight grip on that rein. I have it. Now, when I'm on his back, hand me the rein. He'll Bring him up. Far. He will not throw me. I'm going to ride you, crazy one. I'm going to keep my horse from now. Hand me the rein. All right. Crazy one. Easy, crazy one. Easy, crazy one. Easy. Easy. to ride him the length of the camp for all the old women to see? You won the horse. Enjoy him. It's harder to find a good man than a good horse. Believe me, no horse ever chased a woman. Ponies have raised away the grass. It is time for us to move. Our scouts have located an excellent position for the hunt next month, when the buffalo will be at their fattest and will therefore run much slower. It has been good for us here. It will be better where we're going.
How many did you get? 32 in all, Grandfather. All good fat cows? Four bulls. Ah. Why did I have to find out about this from others? I don't know what you mean. The race. What race? If you really want to race me... Why would I want to race you? How do I know why a crazy woman would want to do anything? Run stooped over told me. I said nothing to run stooped over. He said you wanted to race me. If that's true... It is not true. Fine, then. I have no desire to race a woman. And a crazy one at that. And I have no desire to race a man who can't break his own horse. You were lucky. Lucky? I worked that horse for four days. Lucky, yes. The horse was tired. When is this race to be? What race? You just told me... When? Name the day. Tomorrow. Fine. I'm prepared to change your name. Oh? To what? Loses to a woman. Neither of us could have won. It was that close. No. You won. And is that the last say? There's an old Blackfoot story. When Nappy made man and woman, he said, you two will have to get along. And the man said, We'll get along, because I'll always have the first say. And the woman smiled and said, and I'll always have the last say. And is that the very last say? The very last. Perhaps not. Who's there? Another herring. Horses go. Here we come in. Come. Via, brought you a present of fresh meat. Was, uh, taken only this morning. That's very kind of you.
Um, <clears throat> we were curious about something. Yes. Um, the Bakuni woman walks far. How do you regard her? Highly. Yes, of course. You regard her highly. But what I meant was, in what way do you regard her? As a sister or a daughter or perhaps some other kind of relative? I think of her as all those. But if, um, if a person wishes to have this woman, how does he go about it? The usual way is always the best. Mm -hmm. Am I to understand that you would not mind if somebody was to court this woman? It would depend on who that someone was. Would it be all right for me to court this woman? I'd be happy to have you for a son-in-law. Well, good. But I'm not the one you must ask. I'm glad you decided to talk to me. I've been waiting. Who talked to you? I thought... Your, your smile. I thought you just... I shouldn't have thought you had spoken to me when of course you hadn't. I'm not sure I could like a man who takes so much for granted. You're right. A man I don't even know. You should have been more careful. Where did you get your blanket? In trade. It looks like a fine blanket. It is. A very fine blanket. It's getting chilly out. Let's wrap ourselves in your blanket and you can tell me about yourself. that your full name is Whirling Medicine Cloud, Sacred Horse's Ghost? Yes, yes, that's my name. Some people think you're too handsome for your own good. Well, I... And that you're something of a show-off besides. Always painted and dressed in your finest clothes. Is it true that two summers ago, One Horn's youngest wife tried to persuade you to steal her? No, no, who told you that? They say that's why One Horn went to join Sitting Hall. Waxfar, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I know nothing about it. Box five. I want you to be my woman. Can you tell me what you think your answer might be? I think... maybe.
These horses are for you, many scalps. Three pintos, one black, and a magnificent roan, still bearing an army brand. You are kind, horses, ghosts. Walks far. I want you to be my woman. Will you be my woman? Tell me yes or no. Yes. <laughs> I'll miss you in my teepee, Walks Far. <laughs> <laughs> my sister. <laughs> what are you doing? Rubbing myself with mint for you. Shall I rub some on you? Who's there? A horse's ghost. Who is it? Horse's ghost. My name is Falls Down Laughing. <laughs> what do you want, Falls Down Laughing? Big Lake and Feather Earring say they suppose you'll be sleeping late tomorrow morning. You tell Feather Earring. And since they want to go hunting early, they wonder if you'd lend them your spotted ponies tonight. <laughs> tell him he can have all of my horses tonight. If you'll risk what I'll do to him in the morning. And as for you, falls down laughing. You're going to fall down crying when I catch you. <laughs> Versus Ghost, my name is Rabbit Leggings. Big Lake and Feather Earrings are sorry for having interrupted you. In fact, they're so sorry that they sent you a present. What present, Rabbit Leggings? Two cartridges for your gun. <laughs> they're afraid you may only have one, and you might need two before morning. <laughs> this can go on forever. It's Feather Earrings who should be keeping the others away instead of... <laughs> This horse's ghost. Fat person, if you can hear me, I want you to come here. Fat person, we've always been good friends, isn't that right? Yes, friend horse's ghost. Friend fat person, I know that you're loyal and would like very much to ride one of my horses for a couple of days. I am a true Lakota Sioux and a loyal friend. And I'd like very much to ride one of your horses. Take my gun, fat person. I've loaded it for you. <laughs> and I want you to walk about till sunup and shoot anyone who comes near the teepee. I'll do it. I'll shoot them in the belly. Yeah, shoot them in the belly. Shoot each one twice in the belly. Feet are frozen. Did you really give that boy a loaded rifle? Do you think anyone will try to find out? <laughs> All the old men in the camp will be holding their water tonight, for fear fat person will try to shoot them in the dark. <laughs> I don't think we'll be bothered again.
Who are they? Métis. Mix French and Cree. They're called Métis, the new people. They look different from most half-breeds. Welcome to our camp. We haven't come to trade, Great Chief. But may we visit with you for a while? Sit. We brought only a few poor presents and some unhappy news. Some strong tobacco. What the Blackfoot call real tobacco. And Jews' hops for the women and children. And the news? I'm sorry to be the one riding from camp to camp with such unhappy news. But I feel I owe it to my Sioux brothers. Yes. And what is this news? Some of our people are able to read the white man's language and can tell us what they are doing, or at least plan to do. And what is that? They plan to call a council of all the chiefs. Now? Just before the fall hunt? Soon. For what purpose? The whites hope to buy the Black Hills, the Powder River and Bighorn lands. Why are they asking us to deal with them again? For lands that are already ours by treaty. The treaty has been violated. Surely you know that. And why do they allow it to be violated? The soldiers have all the power they need to enforce it. The soldiers themselves are digging for gold. Exactly like the miners they're supposed to be driving out. Who told you this? Red Cloud. He saw them with his own eyes. And how many of the other chiefs are going to this council? All of them. It will be a waste of time. I know what the answer to the white men will be. We'll refuse to sell them what they want. We'll refuse to give up our sacred hunting grounds. Hello, singer. How long have you been here? Two or three days. I looked for you. We were hunting, my husband and I. Horses Ghost, this is Singer, a friend. Well, have a long trip ahead. It's good to see you again, Walks Far. Travel safely. How do you know him? We met long ago. Where? We went to trade at his lodge. Who? 
Many scalps, Red Hoof and I. Long ago. Is he mixed? Why, Tanas Inabwin? How well did you... <laughs> Is it... Is it... Uh, yes. I'll get the women. Uh, you have time yet. This is her first baby. Have you prayed every morning for an easy delivery and a healthy child? Every morning. If things go badly, we've arranged for a father of mudfish to come and give you a magic dust that'll make you sneeze. Then he'll sing a magic song to put a turtle in to chase a uh, baby out. <laughs> you haven't eaten the insides of any creature, have you? No. Or a bird? You haven't eaten a bird? No. Have all her husband's eagle feathers been removed from the teepee? Yes. Nothing to do but wait. <laughs> My first child was a little girl. I prayed for a boy. What did you call her, Grandfather? Amy. Until she was big enough to walk and have her ears pierced. And then what did you call her? I forget. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> Place the pole against your breast. Are you hard, my child? And place your knees firmly on the ground. Buffalo, please. I have the deerskin bands for her belly and the baby. Oh! Bring him alive. If it's a girl, I'll name her Sky Eyes. Sky Eyes? There's no moon tonight, Grandfather. The sky is dark. It's a fine baby girl. Aha! Sky Eyes! May she always live in peace. You have answered Sitting Bull's call. And he has sent me here to talk to you. you Those were the good the days. Bible. My husband stood tall and proud. My daughter was our joy, and I was the most happy of women. None of us knew then that everything would change. And those of you who do not join us may suffer for it in the future. Oh, hey! I am Little Plume, chief of the Puguni Blackfoot people. You already know that I have little liking for the white man's world, the white man's road, and in fact, most white men themselves. Any Indian who thinks that all white men are cowards and dogs is an Indian who is badly fooling himself. Sitting 
Sitting Bull says, if we do not join you, we will suffer in the future. I say we will not join you, and any Sioux that comes into my Blackfoot country will soon discover that I am not too old to enjoy fighting. I regret that I cannot stay longer. I must take my people hunting. Let him go. He forgets what happened at Powder River last month. He chooses to ignore the 700 soldiers camped opposite the mouth of the Bighorn. Sitting Bull says this, if the whites want war, let us give it to them. <laughs> Take the baby to the circle on the other side of the camp. It's a good day for dying!
take it. Help me with that one over there. I'll share with you. No. I want to find my husband. <laughs> Cover him up. If he gets cold, put warm stones at his feet and under his arms. If he wakes up and is hungry. If? Give him the leanest meat with ripe plums. No fat meat at all. girl is crying to be nursed. was but one of hundreds from the Cheyenne and Sioux nations who together defeated General Custer's forces at the Little Bighorn. It was their greatest triumph in the fight for the plains. Despite this victory, they were soon to lose their traditional life, hunting the buffalo, moving freely from camp to camp. Stop his horse in time. Came charging right through the middle of us. All we could think about was getting out of his way. And that person shooting him and his horse. Oh. Remind me to paint a dead horse on his teepee. <laughs> I admit, we've won our greatest victory. And when there was a young man, it was so long. So long? You're advantage, I mean. There won't be a next time, Grandfather. It's finished.
I am Left Hand Bo, a hunk Papa Sioux, chief of my people. I am Empty Barrel, a Sanzark Sioux, and chief of my people. Where are you leading them, friend? Into the nearest agency. An agency? Why? The soldiers are attacking everywhere. They'll soon have not only the Black Hills, but the Powder River and Bighorn hunting lands as well. They promise to send any Lakota or Cheyenne they catch south to Indian territory, where they'll be forced to farm. Do you know the big camping grounds between the Yellowstone and the last loop of the tongue near the Cottonwood Grove? Yes. The soldiers are building a fort there, and they're stringing poles and wires to it, which means their scouts will soon be able to cover this whole territory. What scouts? The crow dogs. They're helping the army, as usual. So I thought, I thought I would take my people into an agency for the winter. With the cold coming? It is not yet fall, my brother. I know, but just for the winter. Safe journey, then. And to you. Father will be home soon, Sky Eyes. The woods are full of deer.
Who told him he could? Back, Parsnet! Yes, friend Horses Ghost? Who told you you could ride my horse? Why, you did. I did? I did? Yes, Horses Ghost. This morning when I asked you, you said, take the horse, friend fat person. Those were your very words. Liar! 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 You're crazy! You kill him! Listen! No! No! I, I thought. I'm sorry, friend Fat Person. I forgot. You take my horse. You keep him. Keep him, friend. I want you to have him. Ever since he was hurt at Little Bighorn, ever since the death of our child, he... he forgets things, and today he became violent. Yes, his spirit may leave his body from time to time, but he is still strong and healthy. There is nothing to worry about. Surely some medicine. A long time ago, you came to me for medicine to help you break a crazy horse. I had none. I have none to help you now. Don't you plan to hunt with the others? I'll hunt. When? The herd is small. If we wait much longer, they won't... When I'm ready. Horse's ghost. I'm hungry. Plenty of meat in the camp. Hardly enough, and none of it ours. None of it in our kettle. When I'm ready.
I see your wife is a mighty hunter. Throw the dice. Let our guest throw first. Is the wager clear? Clear. Two horses in my teepee. Against my two horses and four buffalo robes. And two of mine with all on their backs. Throw. Is it the Sioux custom to let the women hunt? Is it the Cree custom to eat badgers and skunks? You speak our language well. Now let's see how well you throw the dice. Throw! Throw. I've lost already. Uh -huh, hey. I haven't. Now you have. I will enjoy your horses, my friends. It's a pity you won't have a nice warm teepee anymore to sit in while your wife hunts. My wife seems to interest you. Or perhaps it's only the deer. I'll wager her and the deer against all you have won. Are you sure you want to make such a wager? If you already have a wife, you can send this one to hunt. Or you make love to the other. I have no wife. Then win her if you can. And the deer to eat in celebration. All of my winnings are too many to wager on one throw of the dice. What contest do you prefer? Do you wrestle? I've never wrestled with a Cree. I understand they crawl with lice. One fall on horseback. All of my winnings against the deer and your wife. Done. Done. Why? Why are you doing this? Be quiet, woman. Are you prepared to lose me? I've lost you already, haven't I? What do you call yourself, friend? I am Whirling Medicine Cloud, Sacred Horse's Ghost. And I am Bull Elk hollering on the hillside. I'll judge the contest. I caution you both to keep your tempers. What's going on here? What are they doing? He has wagered walks far, Grandfather, and the deer she shot to the Cree. I want no killing in this camp. It's his life I fear more than his strength. <laughs> Prepare a bed for us, wife.
has many relatives. You would never be safe here again. Go, Oxford. Take your horse and go. Go.
walks by a woman. I'm looking for Singer. Hello, hello. How are you, Walks Bar? I see you met my wife. Her name's Moon Woman. She's Pawnee. Doesn't speak a word to Sue. Singer's not here, but he'll be back soon. You can wait for him inside. Traveled a long way. Yes, very long way. To see me, or are you on your way to someplace else? To see you. Why? I want to stay here in Montana. I won't live in a reservation. I'm here because. I want to buy land from you, enough for a farm and to raise some cattle. Where would you get the cattle, Walks Farm? From you, too. I... My husband and my daughter are dead, and I must start again alone. Will you sell me the land I need? Actually, I own very much of this land. I don't really own all the cattle, either. You see, there's, there's something called a bank mortgage and another something called a cattle company. Do you understand what I'm saying? No. You sound like a white man. And nothing's changed. You told me that a long time ago. Not so long ago. And everything has changed. Will you help me? Or not? I may be able to get you some land. Sure, why not? Make a good tax-paying Indian out of you. Can you speak any English at all? None. But your father was a white man, wasn't he? My father was a Pikuni Blackfoot. No, no. A white man? I know it for a fact. You see, when we go down to register the land, we're going to have to put you in a white woman's dress and give you a white woman's name. My name? My name is Boxfar Woman. I am a Cooney Blackfoot woman who lived with the Sioux. Waxfar, yes, but Waxfar Smith or Waxfar Jones, whose father was a white trader? No. I, I, I have some of the white man's green paper. Wait, wait, wait. Now, where did you get this? Little Bighorn. The beginning and the end. I told you long ago that the time would come when none of us would even remember what it was like to be wild and free on the prairies. You were wrong. I'll remember. Everything. Well, I'm sorry to say that there just isn't enough money here for what you want. I also 
Have this. Well, now. Yes, the large stone is a diamond. And the smaller ones are rubies. You know, together, this is worth all that money on the table. Enough to buy the land I want? Oh, yes. But I have a better idea. Here, you keep it. I already have land. I already have cattle. Share them with me, Waxfar. Share? How? Marry me. We can try. We can try. Walks for a woman lived to be 102 years old. In her lifetime, she had walked farther than those who named her could ever have imagined, from one world into another. She saw the fall of the mighty Indian nations and sent her grandson off to fight in World War II. She died in 1953.